Hello, this is the One Episode Rule, a podcast about first impressions. I am Magpie, fresh off of completing multiple anime side quests, having completed fi- the famous anime Final Fantasy IX and also Bo- mm-hmm. Bochy the Rock, which is great. Um, mm-hmm. uh, how are you guys? Uh, I'm Blackle, um, caught in the damn time loop again. I watched uh, Barbenheimer. Mm-hmm. Or rather, Oppen Barbie on Friday, where we watch Oppenheimer at 10 a.m., then we watch Barbie at like 4 p.m. And uh, I'm going to say Barbie was a better movie. Um, Barbie made me cry. Oppenheimer didn't make me cry. Uh, Barbie left me with uh, gender based existential dread. And not even, Oppenheimer not, made, me left, not, made me leave the film thinking, uh, why did they have to? Why do they have to have him say that line at that time? If you've seen right. the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Not even whenever you were made to look upon Cillian Murphy's balls. <laughs> what? I don't, I don't even know. remember that part. I, I don't know. I heard there was an inappropriate sex scene in that movie. Oh, wow. um, oh, oh, it's not. E- oh, yeah, there was, but e- it's not inappropriate in the things that you, in the way you'd think. It was inappropriate okay. in the. I well, I heard it was totally it. inappropriate. But... Oh, it was. It was very totally inappropriate. But um. um it was very uh, men writing women. Um, oh gosh. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and then also I read the book that the guy who made Disco Elysium wrote before he went on to make Disco Elysium. Set in the Does same Disco universe. Elysium count as an anime? Disco Elysium uh, counts as an anime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's probably the best anime, if that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, I'm going to introduce myself now because that's the part of the show that we're on. Hi. I'm Louie. I didn't watch shit this week. Sorry, guys. Mm. <laughs> One of us has Take to him to the chamber! Him. Well, Usually at least I showed me. up. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> JoJo is, uh, is, as far as I know, still on a plane with a cat. Like so. the story. JoJo, is, JoJo is high above Antarctica right now. But uh, I mean, aren't we all? Preparing for, preparing for low orbit insertion. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh yeah you guys want some news yeah sure all right i've got some news uh i saw a whole bunch of uh i saw a whole bunch of trailers because of an adult swim thing so i saw uh i saw trailers for uzumaki which is mm-hmm. apparently coming out later this year oh is that yeah. the naruto spinoff yeah it's the totally the naruto spinoff you should go into it with that mindset um yeah <laughs> yeah okay uh, a show called uh, Ninja Kamui, which uh, I was previously completely unaware of, but looks like a pretty, pretty punchy, violent revenge flick. Uh, is that the spinoff of Golden Kamui? Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, and uh, finally, they're making they're making another FLCL. I they, oh, I saw that this. actually. Uh, this another one's way. grunge. I don't know what it means. Another fully cooly. Another, mm. But it's another fu- fully coolly, and this one, I, he's like a, he works at like a sushi gin. In this one, but and Haruka looks the same, but part of it's in three D. I don't know, I don't know what they're doing over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, and in, in other uh, Junji Ito based news, uh, did you guys know that he got a he got a, the Inkbot Award from Comic Con? No, I thought you were going to say that he was in a Barbie container. Yeah, and he also posed inside of a big, a six foot tall Barbie box for one of the greatest photos ever seen on Twitter. <laughs> this Barbie box was made for me, and possibly one of the tw- last photos Twitter ever seen anymore. on Twitter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rest in uh, peace, Twitter. And uh, don't, I don't so, think you should rest in peace. I think so. You so yeah, rip and piss. Um, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, good for our boy Junji. I love to see Junji doing well. Um, mm-hmm. And finally, in uh, local South American news, um, <laughs> in the province of uh, Huancayo, Peru, uh, residents have apparently uh, mistaken a TikTok user cosplaying as Frieza for the devil and attempted to murder him. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. Uh, the situation occurred in, in a uh, neighborhood of... Uh, uh, let's see, uh, Sapalianga? Sepal- I don't know. Listen, it's Peru. Mm. Um, where they, uh, where, uh, 
They appar apparently some locals uh, reported a sighting of something they believed to be a supernatural being lurking towards uh, lurking around the cemetery. But but on further investigation, it was revealed that it, that it was in fact a young man dressed as Frieza. <laughs> His costume, complete with horns and tails, struck fear into the several hearts of Castilla, who were unfamiliar with the character and believed they were facing a supernatural threat. <laughs> uh, he did how he did manage to explain himself before they uh, made him into a local legend. <laughs> um, he apparent uh, the young man who introduced himself as Emperor Frieza has a habit of live streaming late at night in supposedly frightening areas. <laughs> uh, let's see. His statement was, first and foremost, I want to send a big shout out to the people of uh, 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 Sapalianga who did not harm me and were very kind returning my things because they apparently confiscated his costume. <laughs> oh my god. Uh so, yeah, uh, the villagers admit that he was not, in fact, the devil, but appear to be fed up with this kind of bullshit and uh, promise that it will be worse for anybody else doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is an incredible news story. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so, Blackhole, uh, you said you had something for us. Yeah, so um, after Barbenheimer, Bob and mm. Barbie, um, Barbenheimer just rolls off the tongue. We Oppie. Oppie. Um, Arby. Arby's? We went to Arby's. No, uh, we went to a bookstore afterwards. And uh, Tetra and my friend Kevin were talking about anime. And Tetra brought up Kato, the right answer. Mm. Which, uh, has been on our to watch list on our viewer su suggestion list for a while now. But uh, we're going to finally get to it. So. All right. Well, let's crack it open then. But enough of that shit. Here comes Cube. Here comes uh, the Cube. Oh, God damn it, we've been cubed again. <laughs> We're just gonna address that in the first couple of minutes. Oh yeah. <sighs> so so uh, since since you brought this one, Black, I think you should read the blurb. Okay. <laughs> Cool-headed and rational, Kurojiro Shindu is a government official and master Shindo. negotiator with a. Just well don't pronounce the U's, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, while departing a business trip, a giant cube materializes and his plane is taken undamaged into a mysterious, indescribable structure. I don't even want to read the rest of this because this isn't the episode. Before. Yeah, it's not in here, but go ahead. Can like... I? Can I? No. no, I'm no not we'll, reading the rest we'll address of this. it. I'll, I'll no. fucking read the rest of it. It's happening. <laughs> it's not real. We're, this is not part of the first impression. Uh, as Japanese authorities attempt to identify the cube's properties and origins, Shindo encounters an otherworldly entity known as Yaha Kui Za Shui <laughs> Shu Nina. <laughs> this is fucking L. Ron Hubbard shit. Um, <laughs> who materializes in the form of a human man. He assures Shindo that the passengers are not in any danger and requests help in negotiations with the human world. Hailing from a higher dimensional universe known as Novo, Yahakui Zashunina is able to transfer information between Novo and Shindo's universe through a cube called Kato. Despite having these unfathomable abilities, he does not appear hostile. Instead, he announces that he has come to this world with only one intention, to in advance humanity, so starting with Japan. So yeah, it's some classic like sci-fi alien shit. I was um, so... I, I guess I'll just let you describe what happens, but I was... You don't even know how the pace, I was. The pacing of this shit is incredible, <laughs> but not in, like, a positive way. <laughs> <laughs> I was... I, okay. I was clenching so hard. I was so scared it was going to be Nisekai. I was so afraid. It. <laughs> just, just, just a full three minutes of terror at the end of the episode? Yeah. Okay, um, so we open uh, we open on uh, the offices of uh, the uh, foreign. Uh, I, 
a fucking government agency. They work for yeah. a government agency. They appear to actually work for several government agencies, depending yeah, on what confusing. fucking time of year it is. But yeah. uh, they uh, they are currently working for uh, foreign affairs, and uh, and we open on a. Uh, a young man uh, named ha Hanamori packing up his desk because apparently it's time to move on to the next posting. Uh, and uh, he, both he and his partner, uh, Shindo, will be doing so. Uh, and he is approached behind, from behind by the head of the department, uh, Igarashi, who, uh, who is uh, talking to him, making pleasant conversation with him. And it's just like, He's just like, well, it's a shame you we didn't you didn't have more to, more than six months to settle in here. And he's just like, yeah, but hey, at least I get a whole month off before the next my next posting. And the garage says, oh, you've got a month of free time, do you? And he just hands hands him a paperclip stack of documents. He's like, oh man, <laughs> are you you're not serious, are you? Um, and uh, him and Shindo, who is a uh, who is slightly taller and cooler looking. Uh, in, in both appearance and disposition. Uh, it's just like, ah, oh, it looks like we've got a job in between jobs. Um, so uh, we, cut, we cut from there to them driving. Uh, the street is filled with funny uh, 3D modeled cars <laughs> that they're trying to make go very fast so you don't notice them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, they they're discussing uh, in the car the the properties of this job and how pissed off Hanamori is about it, because uh, basically it is a he he wants them to close a land deal so that they can put up this multi-purpose hall. They keep throwing around the word multi-purpose hall like it means <laughs> anything. <Yeah. laughs> um, uh, and they have to buy out some some land before they can throw it up, uh, and he. He's noting this. He's like, just like this project has been stalled for years. It's like, what is the big, what is the big fucking hurry? This, these documents have been in somebody's desk for twenty years, and now they only pop up again whenever we're supposed to have a vacation. Chindo <laughs> <laughs> uh, doesn't seem to care. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, they, so they go to meet with a man and. I, that's kind of where I want to get into it, which is a dragon man. Almost ninety percent of this first episode is slowly rolling off the sides of my brain, like it's been coated with Teflon, and it's just not sticking at all because it's, it's a goddamn nothing. super it's, metal. Because it's it's a goddamn super metal. <laughs> because, because it's nothing. My brain has been perfectly chromed against Kato. The right <laughs> answers episode zero, <laughs> which, by the way. Love it when you name an episode, episode zero, just so we can't figure out which one to watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, we might have accidentally watched the prequel. So uh, uh, I I picked this one because I checked on Wikipedia and this aired a day before the first episode aired. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, like that means it's the so first that makes one. it that makes it chronologically the first one. So we watched mm -hmm. it. But but yeah, this is just this is just salary men talking. It feels like an Ayn Rand novel. It it took it felt like it took years <laughs> to watch this. I gotta be real with you though, Magpie. I liked it. <laughs> I, uh, if I had gone into it prepared, maybe I'd be into it. But <laughs> are, are 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 we just uh, putting our cards down and talking about it? A yeah. little bit, but but we do need to we need to move on before I forget everything else that happens in the episode. Yeah. So uh, they sit down at the negotiating table with the guy who owns uh, I God I forget the name of this fucking business Okabe Plating. <laughs> um, I mean, it really doesn't matter. It's a chrome. It's a fucking chrome plating factory. <laughs> they chrome things here. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Everything's chromed in the future, you know. And they sit down and talk with them. Uh, and he's just like, "Wow, this is a pretty generous offer." And he's just like, "He's just like, well, of course, we we made sure to in include enough that you can pay all of your employees se uh, employees severance, so that everybody's nice and taken care of." And the old man, look, this fucking fish eyed old man, <laughs> <laughs> um, he just looked kind of sad. And and uh, his and uh, his partner Shindo is just like, "Can I get a tour of the factory if it's not too much trouble?" Uh, because they I'd look like at to a see the factory. 
they, they look at a fun picture on the wall from 30 years ago and it's just like oh look at them they're at the founding of the factory and they're all wearing the same uh, suits and the building's a little less rusty yeah. <laughs> uh yeah they go down there and they talk about fucking chrome plating for a while <laughs> mm-hmm. i'm just like we we used to do decorative shit but then we got into industrial stuff and <laughs> We didn't work on That's that when big. The money really started flowing in. Uh, didn't work on the big boring machine that did the tunnel. And uh, says, where's your partner? And it's just like his partner's over there looking at a bunch of cylinders that have been chromed. And he's just like, look at how cool this is. And Hannah Moore is just like, what's fucking wrong with you? Let's close this and go home. <laughs> <laughs> and he's right, by the way. <laughs> yeah. That's what makes this like incredible characterization because I think. I love it when a story makes you ask, why the fuck is this dude acting this way? Like, yeah. I feel like that's just like a cheat, like a, like a really easy like cheat code for making your story like interesting. Yeah, may, at least making, in my opinion. You at least want to find out if it's like on purpose. Yeah, yeah. like this this whole episode is just like bureaucratic intrigue, not political intrigue, bureaucratic, bureaucratic intrigue, which I didn't intrigue. think I could like. Um. And yeah, you're you're asking the question. It's just like, is Shindo like this because Shindo is like this, and there's a reason, or is it because the script's over there? <laughs> so, uh, so he's so we cut back to them where they've reported to their their boss's office, whose name I've already forgotten. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, and uh, he. Uh, he he turns over some of his findings, and uh, they got, they're talking about it, and it's just like it's just like new uh they don't have a they don't have enough capital to uh to uh invest in new technology which they desperately need because the orders aren't coming in anymore and he's just like i don't know it's always risky investing in in technology you never know if you've done it uh you never know if you're wrong until uh until it's too late and then they just leave like the the status update sucked there was nothing really new to report <laughs> um, he, they just went to the place and didn't do what he asked. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess like they they can't they they can't be like do your job. Well, actually, you we can't make you do your job because this you're technically doing this on your free time. Like, yeah, this isn't vacation. really this right. isn't really your job. <laughs> yeah. You work for the state department. Um, yeah. but um, but yeah, um, and we cut to them. Uh, they're they're having dinner, I guess. Um, and uh, Hanamori is already wasted, <laughs> which yeah. I, which I think which I think is great characterization. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, it's just like I am so done with this bullshit. Um, it's just like we, it's just like we. This should take us a total of like three days. Why are you dragging ass? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, he's just like I don't know. I just think it's a little weird. Uh, I think it's a little weird that uh, he sits. They sit on this for twenty years, and now they have to push it through all of a sudden. It's mm-hmm. just like, what is it about that place? Uh, and some more of their their colleagues show up, uh, in, including uh, a man whose name I don't re- even remember if he spoke. I don't remember <laughs> either, honestly. Uh, and and businesswoman. Um, businesswoman. Yeah. Uh, and they 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 talk and they talk for a little bit about the about the uh, the job and such. And uh, Shindo asks if uh, he can get an uh, get an introduction to her boss, uh, and she's just like, "No fucking way!" It's like you think you're a charmer, <laughs> um, but uh, as they're walking, uh, uh, they, and and then they they you know they hang it up, they go home, and like Hanamori is so drunk that Shindo is carrying. Him. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Are they like partners partners? Probably not. He like takes his pants off later. This is like uh this is the kind of relationship you get whenever you're like two salarymen who just work together all the time and have to travel (laughs) together constantly and share hotel Uh rooms. Yeah. Um also uh I imagine it's not that uncommon in Japan where it is a social requirement to go out drinking with your office friends to have to undress somebody <laughs> and put them in bed. God damn. I'm so glad I work remotely. Mm. T- just be glad you don't have to work in Japan. <laughs> but uh <laughs> Yeah. Uh actually that's a good point. I used to not work remotely and we didn't have to do that. So Yeah, exactly. You Probably were not more of a Japan thing. You were not made to get your fucking ass blasted off at the 
Ezekiah by cheap beer. Um, mm-hmm. I don't even but, know uh, what alcohol is. Uh, but uh, yeah, they uh, they go back to the hotel, and he does. He's just like, "Don't sleep in your clothes," and he undresses the poor bastard who's wearing like hilarious boxers. <laughs> but um, mm-hmm. uh, and he and he just spends time looking up like electroplating on <laughs> on his laptop. Yeah. I thought that was great. It's that's something like, I would do. That was, like, I, that, that, that's like, I, I relate to this guy a lot because it's just like, uh, well, he seems going, incredulous you see a cool thing too. and you go home and you're just like, mm, I'm going to learn more about this. He seems incredulous too. It's just like chrome. Uh, but, chrome plating? Uh, but yeah, uh, our next, our next, and he gets a text message from the businesswoman who's just like, fine, I got an appointment for you like next Tuesday. Um, so, uh, so like two days later, they uh, they meet up in the cafeteria of one of these big old fucking government buildings that all look mm-hmm. the same. Um, and uh, this guy shows up. This guy is my favorite character in this episode because it's the smarmy old, old asshole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and he's he's commenting. He's just like, oh, it looks like you've brought a whole zoo because Shindo has this weird tick where he just keeps making or making uh, paper cranes and shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's got a little army of them. By the time he's uh, trying they to make them up. as like symmetrical as possible, uh, it's like most yeah, of th- his animation is him like like looking like to see if something's like straight symmetrical you know, or not. Yeah, but um, but uh, yeah. Uh, most of this conversation is uh, is Shindo uh, deadpanly stating what he uh, what he would like from this man, and uh, his uh, his businesswoman colleague just going like, "Oh, cringe," <laughs> <laughs> uh, because yeah, her bo- her boss is just like, uh, "Yeah, what you want an introduction to the to the head of the 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 uh, sciences committee?" It's like, "Well, I don't know why you want that, but yeah, I can make that happen." Hey, do you want a job? Do you want like a better job? And he's just like, "I work for the foreign affairs department." But after that, and he's like, "Okay, yeah, fine, I see. <laughs> Thank you very much for your help." And then he leaves, and the and and her boss is just like, just like, be honest. He's kind of a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then, then we go meet another man. We go meet fucking Doc Brown or Chief Aramaki yeah, from right. fucking Section Nine. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, he shows up, and he's just like, he's just like, well, this is a very interesting idea. Do you think it can be done? And he's just like, well, you tell me. You're the f- physics man. And he's like, ah, Narhodo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, so they collect all of these elements, and uh, they go back to the uh, they go back to the fucking plating company. And they're just like, just like we we can get you a month. And the uh, and the professor from the sciences board has offered to help with the development of new of uh, new technology for your plating business. And he's like, he never st- the man never stops to ask why this is happening. Yeah, like because the government you wouldn't expect the government government dudes who show, showed up to buy your land to like help. That's you. the thing that was just like so weird to me, like. This felt like a, a like almost like heard me like so like bizarre world you know yeah like the, when dude show up from the government to buy your land and you don't want to sell it it's like a negative experience because they're gonna try and get it whether or not they have to pay you directly or not uh, <laughs> yeah that that uh, make, weirdly that endears me to this show because uh, it's just like so weird <laughs> yeah it's just like so odd. But uh, yeah. um, but yeah, they they start cracking in on developing some new technology, and the idea is they're gonna make a uh, they're gonna make like a frictionless chrome plating. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's a, it's just a bunch of scenes of like small time industry. Yeah, <laughs> they're like oh, sticking yeah, they a plate. And these fucking bureaucrats are just hanging around them like they're do- providing any... Like they're helping. Like they're yeah. helping in any way. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because they're not. <laughs> yeah. They're just, they're just kind of, like, they're just raising... There. They're raising the ambient temperature of the room in which the engineers and physicists have to work. <laughs> yeah. Uh <laughs> But yeah, then we cut. We cut back to uh, their boss uh, Ishikawa's office, and uh, just Tanamori is there, and he's yawning, and he's just like, "Well, I've given you a month. 
like, where's Shinda? What's going on? And he's just like, well, he's still negotiating at the site. None of this is counted as negotiating, by the way. They keep bringing up that term, but... Um... It's negotiating. Listen, listen, you don't, you're not a master negotiator, so you don't know. He's you don't know like... the ins and outs of negotiating, but sometimes negotiating is uh, working on your holidays and not even doing the job that you were assigned. We're, uh, working, working on your vacation for somebody who was not paying you and did not expect you to do this. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, uh, Ishikawa is just like, eh, just like, well, all right, bring the car around. I'll go down there myself. And he's just like, you don't, you know, there's really no reason to go down there and yell at everybody. For, it's okay. He's just like, well, the, the, the plant manager and me go, go back a ways. And, uh, they go down there, uh, and the fish eyed man is standing out front waiting for them. Uh, and he's just like, why don't you just take, why don't you just take the money? Um, he's just like, well, I, I'd have to shut down my factory and I'll say yes, but let me show you something first. And they go back in there and the machine that rubs the metal piece is finished rubbing the metal piece and they all hold their breath and take it off and there's not a mark on it. And they're just like, we've made a goddamn super metal. <laughs> we made a damn super metal. Uh, and it's just like, oh, okay. So they made super shiny chrome. Mm-hmm. Yep. And everybody's everybody's really pumped about it, and they're just like, "Ah, hey, yeah, we're gonna develop this it is further." A with bigger the... development than the fucking room temperature superconductor that was just announced today. <laughs> with the uh, we're gonna we're gonna develop it further with the the fucking interior department or some shit, and it's gonna be a hundred billion dollars for to revolutionize the auto industry and shit like that. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Uh, and then they they leave. Everybody just leaves. And they, uh, uh, and and the our our, our two characters are, get on a plane because they're going to go somewhere. I don't know. Mm -hmm. They're going on uh, their vacation. Then, finally, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. I thought they were going no, to because the they're job. dating, so they're going on their vacation. Yeah, yeah, they're going to. <laughs> they're going to go to fucking Enoshima or something. <laughs> Hang out on the beach, but uh, <laughs> but uh. Yeah, they're sitting on the plane, and he's got, like, the piece of metal, and he's just like, wow. It's like a weird, like, end cap segment where it's just like, wow, I learned a lot about chrome plating, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. And I he just want to say, at this point in the episode, I thought, like, oh, this guy's going to have a weird fixation. Well, not weird, but a fixation every episode, and at the end, it's going to be all endearing. Mm hmm yeah, so that's not what happens because I thought no, something similar. Not. I was just like, oh, thank God it's fucking over. But um, I, uh, and then I looked down at the bar and I was just like, hey, there's like a full seven minutes left. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because they're, they're, they're about, they're taxiing uh, onto the uh, runway just to take off. And uh, Hannah Morris is sort of looking at the window, still kind of groggy. And he's just like, hey, Dindo, do you? Do you see that? At this point, uh, I was just like, yo, no, please, no, no, God, no, <laughs> no, 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 please, no, no. Yeah, then, then a bus shows up. And looking out the window, we, we see the arrival of Big Cube. <laughs> Big Cube has arrived. They, oh, they put all of their... Title. They put all of their their budget into into the appearance of big tube because big tube oh. is like a like a cube. animated Mandelbrot cube with yeah. like a we like didn't a kaleidoscope texture. We didn't what? even absorb my demo scene. We didn't adjust the fact that after they left the um the chrome place and when they got on the plane, the animation style changed. Oh yeah, it's just it's all three D now. I did I did not even notice. <laughs> really? Yeah, they they look um, completely different. They're all just like three D models. Oh Jesus! <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, I must have just been I must have just been completely checked out. Um. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, a big rotating kaleidoscope cube comes uh, comes down uh, slowly on top of the plane and like uh, envelops them all in like weird television goo, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and scares the living shit out of everybody inside. It's like enormous too. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like easily like uh, I would say probably like half a mile on a side. <laughs> yeah, uh, and yeah, it's just sitting there. Uh, and the episode ends. 
<laughs> after yeah. it's engulfed the plane. And th there is an after credits thing that's just like, just like, wow, that's a big, the Jazz DF is just like, wow, that's a big cube right there. <laughs> hey, is the, anybody on the plane still alive? <laughs> Anyone not have a chrome? <laughs> anybody, anybody know anything about chrome plating? <laughs> Any low friction chrome plating anyone? If we could really use some information, <laughs> only nineties uh, kids remembers. Uh, I low hated the show. Chrome plating. Wow, I, I, I kind of liked it. I didn't I... like the show at all. I felt like it was pulling teeth out of my head because this is possibly one of the slowest starts I've ever seen to a show. Well, I might turn around on if I watch more. <laughs> I think that. We shouldn't have watched this episode. We should have watched the next one. Yeah, we couldn't have known though. No, yeah. I know we couldn't have. It was hindsight's twenty twenty. And like yeah. this was the first one that aired, and the first one that happens chronologically. Like we couldn't be faulted for watching this. Yeah. Uh, what I want to say is that I was like ignoring the last part, right? Mm -hmm. Ignoring the cube. I was so relieved to like. You dare to anime. ignore the cube? I care to ignore the cube. <laughs> I was so relieved to watch an anime that is just about something other than people getting superpowers or people getting isekai or people mm -hmm. in high school or university or like, I, it was I, just like not something we normally see. And I was just like, this is actually quite refreshing to like, just like enjoy a, like I'll, just a bunch of bureaucrats <laughs> try, like do, try doing some weird stuff. I don't know what about it, it was just like a solve for my brain. I could listen. I could get into the the concept presented by the first part of the episode if they had given it like, like any polish at all. No, I agree. The 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 whole rest of the the, the it, it was it ugly. was it, it was, was so fucking. I think the only dull. thing, the only like execution part of it that I think was like pretty good is that like, uh, I think they were, it didn't linger too long, on dialogue. Yeah, like people they, like yeah, they're gonna it, say it, something. They only they generally only say it once. Yeah, they didn't. I mean, like, I mean, they didn't like hang around and talk forever in the same scene. But yeah, it's just them going to different places and having co like having very neutral conversations, and it it did like almost nothing to hook me. Damn, this episode <laughs> of Succession is incredible. <laughs> um. Um. Yeah, I mean, and then like, they have the I audacity didn't... to show me a huge cube. Me, a <laughs> lover of cubes. Yeah. <laughs> At the end God of that, damn it, we've been cubed again. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I so uh, for review, I would not watch more of this. I don't think it's made a negative impression on me. Uh, I, gotta, I gotta know what happens next. The. Uh, <laughs> apparently, the quality is such that I did not even notice when it got weird. <laughs> Uh, the OP was okay. Eh. Yeah. Felt like a very 2010s uh, alt OP. Like like the kind of stuff you would... Kind of, the kind of thing you would see on like Monster or something. Mm -hmm. um, instead of the sort of J-Rock pop stuff that uh, was really popular with a lot of shows. But, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm going to watch any more of this. Black Hole seems intrigued. What do you think? Lou? I... Do you want to go? No. Uh, okay. Um, I think that uh, like it's interesting. If it's on in the room, I'd probably watch more of it, but I'm not going to seek it out. Mm. Um, I wasn't crazy about the 3D art shift. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the show is overwhelmingly not very. Good. You're making me feel like feel like I'm being gaslit. <laughs> I promise There's it's no, a thing, dude. No memory of this whatsoever. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it, anyway, if uh, if everyone around you became three D three D models without you noticing, you can tell us about that at one episode cast at gmail dot com. It's one the word and not the number, and uh, we're also on X. Twitter. We're on Twitter. <laughs> we're gonna Sears Tower this situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, um. Yeah, we're also on Twitter at uh, one episode cast. I'm not going to call it X unless they're serious about it, uh, about them not being tweets and being zeets instead. <laughs> or like, hey, if you got a Blue Sky invitation, think about us. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the podcast, you listen, the podcast needs yeah. to get to the viewers, wherever the viewers are. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
man. Um, those are, yeah, I, uh... those were a bunch of officials. I mean, every time it would change scenes, it would show a subtitle of where they were, and they would just roll completely off my brain, and I would forget immediately, like <laughs> what building they were uh, in. <laughs> yeah, and they would just be like the centralized bureau of the uh, internal foreign affairs ministry. <laughs> yeah, I'm like my curiosity for the next episode is not really based in me liking the show. It's more mm. just like it's more just like oh fuck you. I guess I'm I guess I'm gonna have to see what happens next to these two gay gay lords. Um, yeah, to the, these but, two gay salarymen. <laughs> yeah, uh, because like God, I don't know what like honestly, Magpie. I think you have the objectively correct opinion that this first episode was bad. Something uh, about it, was, it for some reason really rubbed me the right way. I, listen, that, listen, that'll happen. I've liked yeah. some objectively fucking terrible shows that we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, I don't uh, know why. But, just seeing these businessmen walk around. Oh, Christ almighty. I just saw the Twitter icon update in my bookmarks bar. <laughs> anyway. Um, we got to get anyway. out of here before it gets to us, too. Yeah. Before we're called the one episode, one X rule. Uh, we got to get out of here.